Howdy folks, Steampunk Test Router here. This week, in honor of the 4th of July, I'm doing a video on the Stars and Stripes, the history of the U.S. flag. I did a similar video three years ago and it was well received. Only that time I mostly talked about the Revolutionary War flags, the different designs, the different significance of them, and how we ended up with the one we have now. This time, I'm going to focus more just on the Stars and Stripes, and I'm going to leave out all the other cool rattlesnake and pine tree flags that are from our history. Now, for pe people like me, vexillologists, as we flag fanciers like to call ourselves, we find it interesting in and of itself. But for all the rest of you who think it might be a little trivial, just consider, the history of our flag is also the history of our nation. So as I said, this week we're talking about the history of the Stars and Stripes, the particular design we have now for the American flag, the different variants over the years, how it came to be, and all the other flags that it's inspired. So I'm taking off in a little bit different direction than I did last time. I'm going to be showing you a lot of different flags. I didn't actually buy the flags this time, I just got all the different images because there are a lot of them. There's a lot of them to see. So let's get started. So a lot of you may believe that the first US flag was the Betsy Ross flag. And it's a very interesting, fun flag. It's got the 13 stars in a circle. And it was an early variant, but before that there were other flags that this came from. And so the very first one that I'm going to start with is the flag of the British East India Company. Now this is a little strange that it could have that it should have started this way, but the British East India Company was sort of a mercantile operation that was given sort of a monopoly by the British Crown to open up exploration and trade with East India, what we now called India, and eventually it turned into actual rule by the British. But early on the company was kind of more uh, in charge. And because the company had its own ships, it had to have its own flag. And so here I'm going to show three versions, early versions of the East India Company flag. Now, it started out with the Cross of St. George, just a plain horizontal and vertical red cross on white, which is the flag of England. Later on, it had the Union Jack, which combines the English and Scottish flags. And finally, the version in 1801 and later, which adds the Irish cross of St. Patrick on there. And in the kind of the crossways, it's called a saltier or saltire. Now, so some people think it may have inspired this flag, the Grand Union flag, which was very, very similar, as you can see. Now, it's strange because for no apparent reason, there are 13 stripes on the British East India Company flag. And I've been trying to find that find out why I can't find it on Google <laughs> and I've actually even signed up for that famous infamous chat GPT and it told me it didn't know <laughs> so sources were not sure or there was no evidence either way whatever but it is an odd coincidence so perhaps there's some significance to that number maybe it's like the Illuminati or something like that but it is kind of a coincidence we could easily have a different number, so it is strange that there was 13 of one and 13 of the other. Now, some people say this other flag, which was the arms of George Washington, was also an influence. And it's interesting because there are stars and stripes on it. Currently, it's the flag of the District of Columbia. But others say that, no, it's another coincidence. So here's the Betsy Ross flag. Uh, very famous, very beloved, and here is the rectangular version, which was probably, according to historians, the more commonly used one. So, the funny thing about the 13 star flag was that there were other variants because there was no particular law about how exactly the stars had to be arranged. Sometimes even the stripes were different. So this next slide shows several different versions. Uh, my favorite one is the Bennington with the 76 on it, with the seven pointed stars arranged kind of a U and notice the stripes are backwards <laughs> the, the white stripes are on the outside then we had the cowpens flag which I think is I think it was a battle in Maryland and with a one of the 12, 13 stars in the middle 
and finally the Hopkinson flag, which is very similar to the other rectangular star flag, but the stars are like seven pointed. So it's a little bit of a variation on that. Now, talk about getting even crazier, here's a couple more. And here's another of my favorites, the Serapis flag, which was flown by the ship of John Paul Jones, the Revolutionary War naval hero. Now notice it's got red and white and blue stripes in no particular order, and the stars are kind of uh, a little messed up too. And uh, that's part of why I love it, but also it was because they kind of threw it together. He was, I guess, going to a harbor, I think it was uh, in the Netherlands or someplace, and they said, you have to have a flag or you're going to be considered a pirate because the revolution had just begun. So they quick cobbled one up on board ship, and this is what they came out with. And it's very, it's very different and unique. The other one is called the Easton flag, and it was made in Easton, Pennsylvania. And notice they completely reversed the location of the stripes and the stars because there was no specification as far as where they were supposed to be. And in fact, that one is a completely legal variant according to U.S. law at that time. Now, next one. Notice there are a few more stripes and a few more stars. So after the war was over and the U.S. started admitting more states, we had Vermont and Kentucky, and we now had 15 states. So they said we had 13 stars before and 13 stripes. Now we need 15 of each. And so this flag was a little busier because the, the stripes are getting a little thin. And this was the very flag that's called the Star Spangled Banner because this was flying above Baltimore Har Harbor when Francis Scott Key, the poet, was imprisoned uh, by the British and he saw that the flag was still flying. Now this was during the War of 1812 when the British were attacking the United States and there were some disputes about borders and about the British kidnapping American sailors to force them into the Royal Navy. So this is where the National Anthem comes from. And this is the Star Spangled Banner. Moving on, we've added some more states. <laughs> and at this point, Congress was thinking, wow, we're going to have a lot of stripes here. They're going to be getting pretty thin. Pretty, pretty soon, <laughs> you're not going to be able to see it. It's going to look pink. And so they decided, we're going to stop adding stripes. We're going to go back to 13 for the original, and we're going to add a star only for the states. But to my understanding, they waited a while, and they waited until they had 20 when they did this flag of 20 stars, which was the first official flag after the Star Spangled Banner. And they, there was this rectangular version, which is most best known, but there was also a version where they were arranged in a star. The stars were arranged in a great star. And you'll see this throughout American history because there was no spec specifications as far as exactly how the stars would be arranged, people got really fanciful with them. So it's, it's fun and there's a lot of variance. <laughs> and so I think flag manufacturers were having fun with that. So we just kept adding states and we kept the stripes at 13. We pretty much were standardized. We kept them the same arrangement and basically the same dimensions. But the stars were definitely up for grabs. Now, we've had 27 different official flag arrangements, but again, the official wasn't that official, so a lot of them were different. For example, here is a 24 star flag, and I'm going to show it the only one version of this flag because this is Old Glory. Yes, Old Glory is a specific flag, not just any flag, and this was a flag owned by an American sea captain, William Driver, and he flew this above his ship in the 1820s, I believe, and when he first raised the flag, he said, there is Old Glory, and the name stuck. It came to mean any U.S. flag, but this is the original Old Glory. Interesting story, during the Civil War, he had retired to his home state of Tennessee. Some of his neighbors who were Confederate sympathizers wanted to confiscate the flag, and he said, over my dead body. And so, it was, I guess he kept control of it, but, and it eventually got a little wrecked, but it's, Original flag is still in the Smithsonian Institution for everybody to see. Now, we kept adding stars and it kept changing. For example, here's a 26 star flag and it was, I think it was a legal flag for about 12 years or so. And there was a rectangle version and a star version.
Uh, and so again, we had all these different flags, and some were there for a while, and some were there for a very short time, one or two years, because the rule was we didn't change until the 4th of July. So if like two or three states were admitted during a particular year, and uh, the 4th of July rolled along, then they changed the flag. So along comes the Civil War. And uh, a bunch of states, starting with seven, I believe, and then, and then to 11, southern states seceded. <clears throat> now, at this time, the U.S. flag had 34 stars. Now, they did not delete the, the flags for the southern states because they didn't recognize that. But the, but the Confederacy had to have its own flag, and so they based one very much on the original Union flag, which was called the Stars and Bars because there's only three stripes, and uh, those are the bars. And the stars represented a number of states in the Confederacy. Now, this may be why certain historically ignorant people, I think, uh, confuse this flag with the Betsy Ross flag, because they are kind of similar, but they are not the same. They looked so similar on the battlefield that they had to change it to the more familiar Confederate battle flag. It looks a lot like the Union Jack, with them arranged in the X shape. Now, after the Civil War, uh, we continued adding states. And there were several arrangements that lasted a few years. In particular, um, these three, uh, 37, 38, and 45. And altogether, they lasted for 35 years. But there were other versions, like seven other versions, like 42 or, or, or uh, 46 or whatever. They would last for like one or two years. So these were the major rectangular versions, and, and sometimes they would have ones that looked a little funny. You know, they would have a you know, longer row of stars at the top and the bottom, for example, and uh, so they didn't always line up real well. And then they had the circular versions, which is the ones I really like. That one is called the Centennial Medallion version, and then there's another concentric circle version. I believe these are 37 and 38 star, and I think they're very classy. And that's the kind I prefer. You see them a lot in old uh, war, old movies with the Indian Wars and the cavalry would sometimes fly this flag. Now then we come to the 20th century and the 48 star flag. Now here it is, the flag that was a U.S. official flag for over 60 years. And this was after Arizona and New Mexico became states. And there was no more territories in the main part of the country. And this was flown during World War I, World War II. So if you look at these old movies, there's always the, the flag with the, the stars are all straight in straight lines. <laughs> all straight lines, eight by six. It's a nice design. Uh, but then we had Alaska and Hawaii, and we got the 50, our current flag. And notice they're staggered so that they fit. Now, this is a, an aesthetically pleasing design also because it's staggered such that it's got horizontal lines, it's got vertical lines, it's got diagonal lines. If you look, they all kind of jive together. It's hard to draw if you're an amateur. It was a lot easier to draw the 48, but it is still a nice design. Now here are a couple designs in case we ever get more states like Puerto Rico, District of Columbia, whatever. Uh, they don't look all that much different, but they're not as pleasing as the 50 star flag. They're just the, the, there's so many of them, and they just look kind of jumbled, I think. No, that's probably what they'll do if it ever happens. But I prefer to do something like this. <laughs> now, this is my design, and I would never replace the one we had now unless the number of states changed. This is my idea. I call it the Liberty Bell flag. And the number of stripes, again, is 13, but the number of stars is 10, representing the 10 amendments of the Bill of Rights. And they are seven-point stars because there were seven articles in the Constitution. And in the middle is the Liberty Bell, rep representing liberty. And this is based on the design for the 50-cent piece from the Centennial. <laughs> it was a very nice, simple line drawing. I forget the artist's name. I'll put it on the illustration. But I kind of cleaned that up and simplified it. And I think that would make a very cool flag. So, you know, you guys have my permission. If you want to make it official, if we get any more states, or perhaps if one leaves, whatever, there have been a lot of other flags inspired by the U.S. flag. Included among those are some of the official flags. These are two of my favorites. 
the Coast Guard flag, which does the stripes vertically. This is the ensign, which they fly from ships. And this one is the yacht flag, which looks like the Betsy Ross flag. And I like how the anchor is like at an angle. This is actually an official flag. It was only for ships that were licensed by the federal government early on, like Merchant Green, I think. But now it's legal for any ship that's got a license tag from your state. <laughs> so it is a legal flag. Here's some state flags. Because, again, you would think that state flags would be largely inspired by the Stars and Stripes, the U.S. rah-rah, that kind of thing. Surprisingly not. Perhaps it's because they don't want to take away the thunder of the national flag and they want to do something boring, like a, a coat of arms in the middle of a dark blue field, which is what a lot of them are. But here's some examples of different things. And we are kind of stretching the stars and stripes in the case of California. Of course, we have the famous Lone Star flag of Texas because the secessionists who went to split off from Mexico, they were Americans who had migrated to, into Mexico, and so naturally they based their flag, the Lone Star flag, on the American flag. California was kind of a similar thing, only the California Republic, as it's called, only lasted for a few months, if that. We have one star and one stripe, so I'm counting this, kind of. Finally, we have Hawaii, and it, notice the Union Jack in the corner, in the Canton, which is strange, because Hawaii was never a British colony. <laughs> it's the exception to the rule. It's because the king of Hawaii saw that flag and he liked it. He thought it looked cool, so he put it on his flag. Note the eight red, white, and blue alternating stripes. Those represent the eight principal islands of the Hawaiian island chain. Very nice symbolism there. So let's go on to some more of the small number of state flags that were inspired by the U.S. flag. First of all, North Carolina. <laughs> They kind of ripped off Texas, didn't they? <laughs> Made the star smaller, added initials, etc. Then there's Ohio, the most, the most imaginative, unusual, and distinct American state flag there is. So it's not rectangular. It's a swallowtail, also called a bargy, which was a pennant-type flag that was traditionally flown from a ship. And this was designed in 1900 or 01, perhaps, for the uh, Pan American Exhibition. <laughs> they were having all these exhibitions, and so they designed one for Ohio. And it's a very neat flag with the, the stars and stripes and the O for Ohio in the middle, and it also represents <laughs> the Buckeye Nut in the middle. For the next one, trigger warning, in particular for uh, liberal white women who are, I think, the most easily offended. <laughs> it is the former flag of Mississippi <laughs> with the Confederate battle flag in it. I'm not intending, not doing this intentionally to be offensive, but too bad. And until very recently, uh, the people kept voting against all these proposals to change it, because people said it was racist. And they kept voting it down, so finally the state government said, well, you're changing it, and you're gonna, we'll give you these ones to pick, and that's that. So the people picked, I think reluctantly, they picked this one, uh, which is a magnolia. Eh, it's okay flag. But it's interesting that it reminds me of the Canadian flag. What happened to the Canadian flag? In this next slide, you'll see the old red ensign. And I remember that from as a kid, because that was the official flag of Canada, and I was lived near the border. And it was you know, based on the British flag, as you can see, and they had a little coat of arms in there. And then they changed it to this maple leaf flag, which is nice and simple, but that was because the French in Quebec were complaining it was... It was too exclusionary to have a British Union Jack on there. So it's a similar political situation, I'd say. Uh, it's funny, though, that the Red Ends, and now it's kind of the symbol of Canadian nationalism, and nationalism is bad. <laughs> so I think it's becoming un-PC. A quick tour of some of the other countries and political units that were inspired by the American flag, I think because the Americans broke off away from a colonial power, they were one of the first to do so, and we had a Republican form of government, which inspired a lot of places. Here are three countries or units that broke away from Spain with the aid of the U.S. in 1898. We have Cuba, Puerto Rico, which is affiliated still with the U.S., and the Philippines. Notice the similar design. We have the chevron shape in the, in the on one side, 
instead of Canton, but it has a star or stars. Philippines have a sun, which is also a star, and the stripes. The Cuban flag was done because they had a revolutionary group before the Spanish-American War, and the three blue stripes represent the three regions of Cuba. Now, the Puerto Ricans saw that flag and they said, we like it, so we're going to copy it, but we're going to switch the colors. And of course, the Philippines, we have kind of a different thing, but it's again, it's pretty similar. We have the sun because it's a sunny place and so on. Uh, but it's interesting to note that the, the Puerto Rican flag was actually illegal to fly in Puerto Rico for like 50 years because it represented the independence movement, which was sometimes, sometimes violent. And it's kind of crazy in a country that has a First Amendment, because the Puerto Ricans were under American rule, that such a thing could be. And eventually, in 1952, they said, no, this is the official flag. So not only are you allowed to fly it, you're encouraged to fly it. And you'll see Puerto Ricans, wherever they go, wherever they move, they bring their flag with them. Here's some other flags of different countries. We're going to go through this quickly, because this is getting a little long. But here's... First of all, there's Liberia in Africa, a colony of uh, former slaves in, in the early 1800s from America who were settled on the African coast, very much like an American flag with a single star. Another one, Chile in South America, I think also inspired. And finally, we have Malaysia, which has 15 stripes with 15 regions and or provinces or whatever they are, and a star and a moon because of Islam, because most Malaysians are Muslim. Here's three more uh, of the Canton type. We have uh, Greece with the Greek cross, Uruguay with the Son of May, as, it call, as it's called, which represents the revolution against the Spanish, and Togo in Africa <laughs> with a single star. Again, we have stars and stripes. And here's a few more that are fun because they are the uh, Chevron type, very quickly, uh, Jordan, Mozambique, South Sudan, Comoros, and Zimbabwe. Here's two more that are like revolutionary or unrecognized countries, Abkhazia, uh, which is breaking up free from Georgia, not the country, not the state, and uh, West New Guinea, which is trying to break free from Indonesia, very stars and striping like. So, as you can see, the U.S. flag has, has made a lot of changes over the years. There's been a lot of evolution in it, and it probably still evolve. It's uh, very significant as far as America's role in the world, and its history, all the, our expansion, our civil war, and so on. It really, really does show up in a lot of other, um, a lot of other countries as inspiration and so on. In fact, other flags are sometimes modeled on our flag flags really do give a very interesting view into history. So this has been my video on the Stars and Stripes, the history of the American flag, its origins and its influences on other flags throughout the world. Hope you liked it. Please let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. That helps us get out the good steampunk and history word. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.